and welcome back to Evolve Artists. This is block one, assignment 13. We're getting there, we're getting there. This is the pot with an apple on a cylinder, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, these paintings don't have actual names, but I'm just describing what I see. So as usual, we start with transferring the line art to canvas and then laying down the shadow values and then the light values going from dark to light. And one thing I kind of want to talk about for this video is the idea of doing outside exercises. So with, with Evolve, they give us a certain step-by-step -step process for learning all of the skills that we need for oil painting, beginning with the black and white um, working on values and edges, and then reflections and highlights and things like that as well. And one thing that I often see students asking, including myself, is that we ask the, the instructors, should, should I be practicing more? Should I do a little bit more, um, you know, practice with gradients or with edges aside from the Evolve assignments? And the instructors always say, no, don't do that because we don't want to encourage perfectionism and also because um, without proper feedback from the instructors, you might be doing something wrong and you don't even know it. So I totally understand that. And actually, um, I'm okay with that. There have been people who try to do other things. I see a lot of my peers, some of whom are actual artists, unlike myself, who actually have a background in painting. And they do other mediums, other exercises, paint other pictures. And sometimes a part of me is like wondering, should I do a little bit more as well? But actually I'm okay with just doing whatever the instructors tell me to do within this program. As some people say, you know, um, when you don't know what you're doing, do what the teacher tells you to do. Just do exactly that, no more, no less. And then after you become an expert, after you know more about what you're doing, then you can kind of expand your practicing. But for now, do what you're told. <laughs> and actually, I think Kevin said this in one of his videos. He says, you don't know enough right now to have an opinion. So just do what I tell you. And it sounds a little bit like, what's the word? Military. But I actually would agree. Um, for me, learning art, I'm not 100% sure exactly what, where I'm going with this, I suppose. I mean, there's some people who really want to, say, go to an art college or they want to become animators or that's not really my goal with art. I just want to get good at it. Um, this is just something that enhances, what's, what's the word? Not enhance, enriches my life. And so I, I just want to get good at it, but I don't. I'm not like, I don't feel that perfectionistic drive, let's put it that way. Um, I just want to be good enough at it and always be improving at it so that there, there's the, the enjoyment is there. And for me, mastery, um, which for me is an ongoing process, is part of the enjoyment. And so I like improving, I like getting better, I really like having this scaffolded approach to learning art that Kevin teaches through Evolve. Um, but I don't feel the need necessarily to race ahead and push. This isn't um, like academics at school. You're not competing with anyone. You're just doing the best you can for your own sake, for your own purposes. And in some ways, I kind of like that um, laid back intensity, I think is the best attitude that you can have for this. So I'm trying to cultivate an attitude of laid back intensity or not so much intensity, but carefulness, laid back, but careful. So. You're not pushing yourself too hard to be perfect, but you're not being sloppy or lazy either. You're trying to do the best that you can with what you have in the moment. All right, so I've laid down all the colors here, done the gradients, and I'm filling in the background. Um, haven't really started doing the reflections and highlights yet. That's for a later step, but once I do, it's amazing how these images pop. It's really interesting, um, the highlights and reflection step, what that does to the picture, really brings it out. It's amazing how little things can make such a huge difference. It's kind of like the first time I learned how when you put a dot of white in the eyes in of a face, if you're drawing the eyes and the pupil and you put a dot of white in there, it makes the entire face come alive. It's incredible. So here, now we're in the reflections and highlights step, putting in some lighter shades and to the shadows and some darker shades to some of the, the moderate shadow um, as appropriate based on what I see in the photo. But what really popped, uh, made this picture pop for me is doing the highlights on the pot, which I'm doing right here. So having those two little lines 
at the lip of the pot and then that one a little lower down, it really makes this look like a three-dimensional pot. I remember being kind of stunned at the at the effect of reflections and highlights. I mean, I'd been doing reflections and highlights before, but this is the first time I was like, oh, I see it. I see why it works like that. Although I still think that highlight on the apple is a little odd, but anyways. So that is assignment 13, the apple in the pot. Um, remember to be creative and I'll see you in the next video.